So if I were mayor, I think what I would do, and again, I'm not 100% positive that this is in the mayor's purview, but I'm sure <laughs> she could uh, figure out a way to make it happen, um, is I would push for some changes in, uh, me and my family does some real estate development. My brother is a real estate developer and is very knowledgeable and spent some time in New York City and has told me a lot of innovative things that New York City did after 9-11, for example, to encourage development back in lower Manhattan, around, around Ground Zero. And some of the things that cities like New York do, just even outside of 9-11, of but just uh, in general, about in, to encourage development and to encourage thoughtful development and to encourage um, low-income housing, too. I believe that there are different areas of New York or different rules for different types of developments in New York that are required to have a certain number of lower income units and um, they, they sort of horse trade different things that developers might want. They incentivize developers, New York City does, uh, to develop lower income housing and, and it works. And I think one of the things that we need to do better as a city is in planning. I think we have to have, and I know we're trying to do this, but we, when we have a set of rules, we stay stick by those rules and don't, don't change them on a case-by-case -case basis. New, cities like New York are proof positive that when you have rules and you stick by them, and you put your foot down and you don't, we have, we have such a history of uh, spot zoning, it's called, generally speaking, case-by-case -case situations where we make exceptions to the, to the rules for individual owners and individual developers. So we've created a system where no one is sure what is allowed and what's not allowed and everyone is willing to gamble that they might be able to get something approved that technically they shouldn't get approved which really is not fair for anybody. It, certainty scares away good developers, to be honest. There are things that, you know, when my, when my brother, when my family goes to develop something, if we have a, a, a piece of, of ground, piece of land, we look at what's allowed there and we make our decisions based on that. We don't think, oh, well, let's buy it and then get that changed, or let's buy it and then let's go ask and see if we can get something different. And no, we just look and, if it's allowed, we do it. If it's not allowed, we don't do it. And then too often in this city, someone else comes along and with the same piece of land and, you know, just gets an unfair advantage. And that really does scare away good developers and smart developers. And so I think, and a lot of times too, I think we have a fear here of that if we tell someone no, then they'll take their ball and go home. And that's not true. It's really not. If you tell someone no, here are the rules. No, you can't not you can't do what you want to do because it's against the rules. Here are the rules. Come back with something that meets these rules and you can go to town. That would happen. It does happen in cities all over the country, all over the world, all the time. And so if we changed our mindset about that, I think we could have um, smarter, better development with less pain and anguish and it would be quicker and easier and um, also we could do things like incentivize low, lower income housing and things like that too if we got really creative um, and other cities have done it. So I think that's something that I would really focus on just f coming from a construction and development perspective. That's something that I think, um, you know, I would uh, spend a lot of capital trying to change the way that we do things.